Hello students, today we will be, discuss, uh, we'll be discussing about few extra questions. Uh, till last chapter the explanation was over and also NCRT questions were like uh, NCRT questions were also done. So, today it is turn for the some uh, extra questions to be done. Now question number 1, what is the full form of DNA and RNA? What is the full form? Answer number 1. What is the full form of DNA and RNA? So, deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid is the full form. So, we will write over here uh, DNA and RNA. If we talk about DNA and RNA, we have studied that DNA is very very important. It plays very important role as the chromosomes are uh, made up of DNA and this is responsible for the transfer of genetic material from one generation to another generation and so DNA plays very important role in cell division in our body and also for the transmission of the genetic characters from one generation to another generation. When we talk about RNA, RNA is responsible for the formation of like uh, it plays important role in protein synthesis. So, I will just write the full form deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid is a full form for DNA and ribonucleic acid is the full form for RNA, ribonucleic acid and deoxyribonucleic acid. And if we talk about the functions that also we have discussed. DNA as it is uh, a genetic material or the genetic material get transferred from one generation to another generation just because of the presence of the DNA and ribosome is very very important because it is responsible for the formation of protein synthesis protein in the body. Now we will come to the next question. Second question is chloroplast is also known as kitchen of the cell. Do you think this analogy is correct? In last lecture also we have discussed this and I told you that chloroplast is often known as the kitchen of the plant or why it is known as kitchen of the plant because in chloroplast pigment which pigment chlorophyll is present and chlorophyll traps the sun light and that is the reason why the process of photosynthesis takes place in plants. That means chlorophyll plays very important role uh, or we can say the chloroplast plays very important role in the manufacture of food in the plants. But then the question arises the chloroplast is known as the kitchen of the cell. Is it correct? Can we say that this is a kitchen? We cannot say. See, it is told. It is told normally, but uh, if we talk about the kitchen, what we do in the kitchen? We just cook the food. We don't make the food. We never make wheat or we never make rice or anything in the food in the kitchen. We just the things are there. The rice is there. Wheat is there and all this material is there we are not making we are just cooking the food we are not producing the food but when we talk about the chloroplast chloroplast is responsible for the like the production of the food there the food is produced so this here we can say that this analogy is not correct although it is being used for many uh, years and it is used uh, very commonly, but what I think is it is not correct because we do not produce food in the kitchen, we just cook the food in the kitchen. Whereas, 
the chloroplast is responsible for the production of the food. Now this answer is totally like it depends upon the view, it differs from view to view. So nothing is correct and nothing is wrong in this answer, it depends upon your own view. So if I want to, if uh, here definitely I will be writing my, my view. So chloroplast is often known as kitchen of the plant but in the kitchen the food is cooked whereas chloroplast what is why uh, what is the difference chloroplast is a responsible for the production of food so what i feel is this is not a correct analogy so this is not correct analogy now we will move to the next question which will be definitely answer number 3 this was our question number 1 the full form of DNA RNA deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid and the second question is about chloroplast is known as the kitchen of the plant is it correct so what I I feel what I think that this is not correct because in the kitchen we do not produce food we just cook the food whereas the chloroplast is responsible for the production of the food in the plants. Coming to the next one what are anthocyanins? What are anthocyanins? I will just write over here anthocyanins. What is anthocyanin? We have studied, we have discussed that there are certain pigments in the plant. Actually, we are talking about the plastids. Plastids are there in the plant and definitely only in the plants. We have discussed that plastids are of various types. The chloroplast is one of them, which we just discussed now. And the another one is the one which is responsible for giving the colors to the fruits and the vegetables and it is chromoplast. But there are certain uh, colors you know like uh, blue, purple, violet. These colors are not because of the presence of the chromoplast. These colors are not due to the presence of the chromoplast rather the pigment known as anthocyanin the pigment which is known as anthocyanin is present in the cell cell in the dissolved form and this is the reason why we can see certain blue and violet and purple color in the plants maybe like with, when we talk about these colors it can be for the uh, the fruits, vegetables or maybe the flowers. So when we talk about anthocyanins, this is definitely something which is extra not given in NCRT but one has to know because when we read plastids, uh, definitely the thing was like the color chromoplast is responsible for giving the different colors to the plants, uh, maybe the vegetables and the fruits and the flowers. And so it becomes very very essential to know about this thing 
and to sign in and so I have put this selected this question because it has to be uh, like uh, should be there in the mind that there are certain other things also which gives color to the vegetables and the flowers and the fruits. So this one is our pigment anthocyanin is just a pigment color pigment when we talk about the blue or the violet or purple color these colors are not due to the presence of the chromoplast rather these are because of the presence of anthocyanin in the cell sip it is present in the dissolved form so I'll just write few colors like blue purple etc is not due to the presence of chromoplast rather a pigment known as anthocyanin is present in the cell step in dissolved form and gives color to fruits flower etc okay fruit flower means maybe the vegetables now it's not about all colors i'm specifically talking about blue purple i forgot to write wallet over here even wallet these colors are not, not due to the presence of the chromoplast rather it is due to the presence of the pigment which is known as anthocyanin now we'll move to the next question and that is answer number 4 now what is question number 4 why nucleus is said to be the most important part of the cell we have discussed the same yesterday it was there uh, in the NCRT but not exactly in the form which is now asked nucleus just yesterday a short note was there in the NCRT now what if when we talk about the importance of the nucleus we have discussed this why nucleus is known as the head of the cell why it is known as the controller of the cell why it is known as the uh, most important part of a cell because it plays very important role in the control of all the functions of the cell and it controls various processes and it is very very important in cell division and even in the transfer of the genetic material from one generation to the another generation and if nucleus is removed from the cell definitely the nucleus uh, if it is removed the cell collapse that is the reason it is known as the controller of the cell I just write the gist of this because we have discussed this thing a bit in a different way but definitely we have discussed this so nucleus controls the function controls all the functions participates in cell division I am not writing in a complete sentence participates in cell division responsible for transfer of genetic material responsible for 
ट्रांसफर ऑफ जेनेटिक मटेरियल एंड इफ इट इज रिमूव्ड इफ द न्यूक्लियस इज रिमूव सेल डाइज इफ इट इज रिमूव्ड द सेल डाइज these all are the reasons why the nucleus is known as the controller of the cell and it plays a very very important role in the cell now come to the next question this was answer number 4 now we'll talk about question number 5 there's no place to write write the names of the smallest longest and the largest cell the question number 5 is mention the name of the cell which is the smallest one the one which is longest one and the one which is largest one so which cells are these when we talk about the smallest one bacterial cells or the bacteria or the uh, bacteria are the one which are uh, you know which are the one which falls in this category the smallest cell this size is from 0 0.1 micrometer to uh, 0.1 micrometer to 0.5 micrometer which one is very very small micrometer is 1 millionth part of the meter that means just imagine how small it is when we talk about the longest cell definitely nervous tissues cell that means the neurons are the one which are long the tail the tail uh, not tail the tail can be very long and so this comes in the category of the longest cell and when we talk about the largest cell then the all <laughs> then the egg of the ostrich i was supposed to say ostrich first so ostrich egg is the one which is the largest one so bacterial is the smallest one ostrich is the largest one and neurons are the longest one so there is no place i'll just clean up and we'll write the answer now we'll talk about the question number 5th so question number 5th is write the names of the smallest longest and largest cells so just now we have described so the smallest cell is the smallest cell is a bacterial or the bacteria 0.2 to 0.5 mm bacteria if we talk about the largest cell egg of the ostrich egg of the ostrich it's and when we talk about the longest cell the longest cell is the nerve cell the longest cell is the nerve cell just now we have discussed the smallest cell is the bacteria and the largest is the nerve cells because it has to give information from one part of the body to the other part of the body and the largest if we talk about then the cell of the ostrich the uh, the, uh, the egg of the ostrich i'm so sorry egg of the ostrich is the largest one now we'll move to the next question and this one is i suppose so let me read out with the question cells inside the body are often compared with the bricks in the wall but what is the main difference between the two the comparison is done between the bricks and the cells while teaching while discussing this chapter even i have compared we have discussed this that the brick of a wall is the one which forms the total 
they are wall that means when the wall has to be formed many bricks are utilized to form the structure in the same way when we talk about the body any body we talk about any living organism the smallest unit is cell and cell combines to form tissues definitely tissues combine to form organs and then organ system and then when the organ system they combine to form a body but the smallest unit is cell if cells doesn't combine together the tissues won't be formed and so forth and so on so the comparison is correct but then they have asked about the difference what is the major the biggest difference between this the brick is non living thing a uh, brick is a non living thing and when the bricks many bricks are brought together wall is firm but still the brick is non living thing and the cells which we are talking about these cells are the living part of a living organism when many cells combine together the the structure is formed so if we talk about the difference the bricks the bricks are the non living part brick is non living or uh, bricks are non living and if we talk about the cells cells are living part cells are living structure cells are living structure and when we say cells are living structure then definitely cell requires everything whatever living thing needs it will respire it will grow it will divide it will die so all these living processes can be seen in a cell but this these all processes will definitely be absent in the bricks so all living process all living processes which living processes like death growth reproduction etc will be all living processes like death growth respiration reproduction etc will be seen whereas when we talk about the bricks all these characteristics all these features all these living processes will be absent so i will just write in short will be absent all these processes will not be seen in the bricks but one thing is correct definitely that the bricks are the one which is the smallest structure of a wall and even the cells are the smallest structure of the living organism so the comparison is done but the comparison cannot be done if we talk about the living and non living if we say how a living and non living thing can be compared but it is not compared in that way it is just compared in what way it is just compared in a way that the bricks are the one which are the smallest unit of any wall whereas the cells are the smallest part of any living organism so now we'll proceed towards the next question that is question number 7 now we'll talk about the next question which is question number 7 and this one is which parts of a cell are concerned with the following which part of a cell are concerned with the following the this one is answer number 7 a what is given liberation of energy a is liberation of energy and b is synthesis of protein what it is yeah synthesis of protein now 
liberation of energy we have studied this which organelle which cell organelle is responsible for the liberation of energy it is mitochondria it is mitochondria and that is the reason that it is known as the powerhouse of the cell so this one is mitochondria and synthesis of protein is a rough endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum now what is the difference between the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes on them it has got ribosomes on them which is responsible for the synthesis of protein and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum do not have ribosomes and so protein synthesis do not takes place over there but the rough endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for the synthesis of the protein so who is responsible actually the ribosomes are responsible the ribosomes are one which is initiating so this one is liberation of energy the powerhouse of the cell why it is known as powerhouse of the cell because the energy is liberated and it is because of the mitochondria and the synthesis of protein is because of the rough endoplasmic reticulum now we'll move to the next question and this one is question number 8 now the question number 8 is answer number 8 or i'll read the question do you think a cell of an elephant would be larger than the cell of a rat the question is the cell of a rat will be la, uh, smaller and the cell of an elephant will be bigger will it will be the case no the size of an organism the size of an organism does not affect the size of a cell size of an organism size of an organism will not affect will not affect the size of the cell the organism is bigger or the smaller the cell will be always smaller you know this question is just like if we have to make a big wall so do we need to take the bigger sized bricks the wall is small or the wall is big the size of the brick is same only the size of the brick is not increased but the number of the bricks are increased say for example we have got 100 bricks if we have got 100 bricks you can imagine how big wall will be formed and at the same time if in the second case if we have got 10000 bricks now you yourself can imagine the difference between a wall which is made by the 100 bricks and the wall which is made by the 10000 bricks the number of the bricks are more that is the reason the structure the wall will be bigger in at the in the same way in the red the size doesn't uh, won't be different the size of a cell of an elephant and the red will be same but what will be the uh, case the number of the cells in the elephant will be bigger will be i'm i'm so sorry it will be more that means the cell will be more the numbers of the cell will be more and so the bigger structure will be formed so size of an organism will not affect the size of the cell rather the size of the cell will 
चेंज दी नंबर ऑफ द सेल नंबर ऑफ द सेल दैट मीन्स वॉट मोर इफ दी मोर सेल्स आर देयर मोर सेल्स बिगर स्ट्रक्चर मोर सेल्स बिगर स्ट्रक्चर वेर इज लेस सेल्स स्मॉलर स्ट्रक्चर यस सो दी सेल्स विल नॉट बी डिफरेंट इन दी साइज बट इफ दी ऑर्गेनिज्म इज बिगर दैट मीन्स इन नंबर ऑफ दी सेल्स विल बी मोर सो दिस वॉज आर आंसर नंबर एट एंड नाउ वी विल डिस्कस दी आंसर नंबर नाइन्थ so let me read the question number 9 it is yes now the answer number 9 question number 9 is who proposed the cell theory which scientist proposed the cell theory now we know we have studied this cell theory the cell theory what does the cell theory says the cell theory says that all living organisms are made up of cells and the cells are the basic unit or the structure and the functional unit of the organ living organism okay and again what was said and all the cells are identical in the basic structure and function that means we have discussed this thing also like all eukaryotic cells are same in the basic structure that is the thing like all the structure will be same but their functions the basic function will be same but if the neuron is compared with the cell which is present in the stomata it will be quite different but the basic structure will be same and one more postulate was given by the another scientist actually the cell theory was given by shredden and shawn two scientists and the last postulate was given by rodolf wachow so if we talk about the credit of the cell theory who gave the cell theory shredden and shawn gave the cell theory this two, this two scientists gave the cell theory all the points were explained but the last postulate that the cells arises from a pre existing cell that means a cell comes from the cell which is already present by what by cell division so who gave this last postulate this last postulate was given by rodolf wachow so we are talking about answer number 9 so who gave cell theory cell theory was given by schledin and shawn and read the last point the last point of the cell theory was modified uh, we should not say modified but the last point was given by rodolf it was given by rotolf and rofer show and he was responsible for the uh, last postulate of the cell theory so what does the cell theory says the cell theory says that e d i a n the cell theory says that all living organisms are made up of cells the cells are the basic the structural unit and the function unit of any living organism and all the cells are basically same in their structure and function this was given by shredden and shawn and rudolf wachow gave the last postulate which is the cell comes from the pre existing cell that means from where a cell comes a cell comes from the uh, another cell which is already present so a cell will divide and then only a new cell can come into existence so this was a cell theory given by three scientists actually when we talk about the modern cell theory shredden and shawn and rodolf wachow so 
this was our answer number 9 and now we will talk about answer number 10. So, what is the question number 10? Why was cell discovered only after the invention of microscope? Question number 10 is why cell was discovered only after the invention of the microscope? We all know that cell is a microscopic structure. Cells are very very minute. It cannot be seen by naked eyes and so to, uh, to see the structure of the cell or to even see to find out that whether cell is to find certain structure certain the special uh, eyes or the edge were needed and so it was not at all possible to uh, find out anything about the cell or even about the cell that cell exists or does not exist. It was just possible only because of the microscope. Why? Because the cells are microscopic structure because cells are microscopic structure. Cells are microscopic structure and cannot be seen with the naked eyes. Please complete this answer. The main point I have written that why cell cannot be, uh, what was the question? It was question number 10. Why was cell discovered? Yeah. So, why was cell discovered? Why it was not discovered before? Because it is, uh, the cell is a microscopic so it cannot be seen by the eyes and so it was only possible uh, to uh, study or to see the cell uh, when the microscope was there in the hand. So, this was question number 10. So, this uh, here I have not written completely, but now it is quite uh, easy to understand from this and that is the reason when Robert Hooke had his own uh, microscope then uh, it was possible for him to see a slide of a cog or the bark of a plant which uh, indicates a dead plant the dead tissue and it was possible for him to sell, uh, to see to observe the cells and in that cell he was the first one who saw the uh, who saw the cell uh, it is correct that he saw a cell in the dead part so he saw the dead cell and that is the reason that when he saw the cell nothing was found inside just the walls the compartments of the cell were seen because at, as it was a dead cell nothing was present inside the cell just the, the whatever he would have seen it would be just it would have been it would be just the cell walls the outer structure and nothing was inside and it looked like the uh, small compartments and so he named the uh, uh, this term cell. Afterwards, uh, it was discovered the living cell was uh, seen afterwards. So, this was the Robert Hook who uh, saw the cell for the first time, but this was not the question. The question was that who dis who uh, I am so sorry, the why the cell was not able to or uh, why the cell was discovered only after the discovery of the microscope. Now, we will talk about the answer number 11. So, I will just read out the question number 11 what it is. Question number 11 is cell is a structural and functional unit of life. This thing we have studied many a times, but the question is left now. What happens when cell dies? A cell is a living part, a cell is a living, uh, it is a smallest, but it is a living structure. So, it requires everything, all the uh, characteristic features of a living organism or we can say that all it the cell shows all the living features or we can say that it, it undergoes all the processes all the processes are seen like respiration re reproduction uh, growth everything is seen in the cell. So, obviously death will also be there and we know that the cells die, but when the cells die what happens? So, we will come to this answer, I will just 
please do this and then we will discuss this answer.